Alright, what's going on everybody? Pragmatic Addict here. Thank you so much for checking out this video. This is my review of the movie Watcher, starring Micah Monroe. So, Watcher centers on a woman played by Micah Monroe. She is getting settled in Romania with her husband after he moves to Romania for a job promotion. Yeah, we've seen that shit before. So, one thing that I wanted to talk about before I get into this review is that Micah Monroe, she's just crushing it, man. I mean, going from It Follows to, you know, The Guest to Villains with Bill Skarsgård, which is a really underrated horror film uh, that I absolutely recommend. Uh, probably is going to be much like this one. I don't know if this one is going to get too much recognition because this is actually a limited release. This is also going to be streaming on Shudder eventually. And I just got to say, Micah Monroe, dude, whenever this woman is in a horror film, I'm there, dude, day one. So, yes, Watcher centers on a woman who is uh, settling in Romania uh, after her husband and her move there for a job promotion. And Micah's Monroe character uh, playing a shun for the most part, someone who is very unfamiliar with these uh, surroundings, with this environment. She is cooped up in this apartment of hers, and as she looks out the window, as she has nothing to do, she notices that there is a man right across the way from her, looking directly back at her. And as things go forward, we start seeing this man following her everywhere she goes, and he's appearing in uncomfortable places, he's got an uncomfortable behavior to him, and one thing that I'm going to say about this film is that it does have that feel of, like, paranoia, obsession, isolation, is it all in her head? You know, you can't really trust anyone or anything. It's got that kind of feel. Um, it does feel, in this, in a sense, kind of like the film Unsane, where, you know, again, this woman is being followed, but at the same time, you really don't know what to trust or what's really happening or what's real or not or who is actually what they say they are. And another thing I'm going to say as well is that if you've seen films like Swallow, this is is very kind of similar to that movie not in any way you know in the sense of the story but this is a character study about a woman who is you know kind of an outcast in this environment you know she's not exactly welcome she doesn't exactly you know have the strongest kind of connection with her husband she is mainly just here to support him and she's dealing with this issue that no one really seems to quite get and now getting into the movie itself this is a absolutely beautiful movie. It's got a really stylish and crafty directorial kind of uh, stance to it. And just Maika Monroe as an actress, not only as the character, but just her specifically. She was perfect for this film. Again, not just even performance-wise, but just as an actor, this is a really good choice for her specifically as an actress. What I really admired about this film is that it does come off as a very subtle, very ominous, quiet, you know, mysterious film. It and it does feel voyeuristic at that. It had a very I'm not gonna say quite like rear window kind of feel to it, but but it did feel again very psychological. It felt very mindful and very kind of stuck in its own kind of head. It does really well with fleshing out this specific character and you know with her adapting and adjusting to this new environment and it gives a really solid you know simple outlook on her as a human being not just as a character who is being who is portrayed as like a woman being watched but just as a human being in general and it's not just like the environment or the setting or the character that was pretty portrayed like pretty uh pretty well in its own kind of like uh realm but just and when i say environment i just i don't just mean like the layout of the film i mean like the conditions of the weather and everything, the real outlook of the film. It's got a very, like, shut-in, kind of, like, rainy day feel to it. It's just, it, it's just one of those films that you watch on a rainy day. It's a very gloomy, very cold, very chilling kind of film of this woman who is stuck in a really uncomfortable situation in a really new territory with not much resources to help her out through it. Now, this film, I'm going to say right off the bat, it's not really, it doesn't really outdo anything. It doesn't really do anything new, but it is just what it comes down to is it is a very solid psychological mystery that does a pretty solid job at keeping things fresh and keeping the viewer guessing. You know, again, this is a very kind of common, you know, thriller of a 
kind of suspense story. And yeah, you know, characters do come off pretty familiar with what we've seen in other films. You know, she's got this husband who isn't quite in the picture that you don't really know whether you should trust or not. And when he's actually at the center of things and is actually kind of getting thrown into the thick of it, it's not really that justifiable to him. And, you know, it, it goes to the thing where, you know, there are these minimal characters that are just kind of there for filler to kind of keep the story going and to kind of, you know, add to, you know, the story in itself that don't really feel all that necessary. But again, it does help flesh out the story a little more. It's kind of like in that realm where it's not really anything new or outdoing of anything. But it does do an, a good enough, again, idea of just keeping things fresh, keeping things stationary, and keeping the story going for its runtime. Going back to uh, Micah Monroe's character specifically, going forward with that, and kind of like how it feels, in a sense, like kind of like relatable to Swallow. Like, we see her at, you know, dinners and like, you know, talking with other people and like little parties where, you know, she is just kind of being like the third wheel, kind of like left out in the corner where everyone's speaking Romanian. She's like, well, hey, what, like, what are you guys saying? What's going on? Or she'll see something on the news that, you know, kind of can maybe point toward more her reasonings for things and she can't understand. So she's like asking her husband, like, hey, so like, what, what are they saying? And he'll be like, oh, you know, not too much. Kind of like that. She feels... They do a pretty solid job at making this woman who's just trying to be supportive, who is just this wife who comes along because in support of her husband, where she is just being an outcast and just kind of thrown into a situation that is very uncomfortable that no one will quite understand or really reason with her about. And another thing I just had to bring up, which I don't think that there's any real relation to this film, but... The movie It Follows, which was uh, Maika Monroe's kind of like breakout film, um, it does feel like that in a sense where, you know, this woman's just trying to go about her day and things start escalating where, you know, it does fall into isolation and paranoia and obsession where, you know, you get this lingering kind of eyes on you kind of a feel where you're just kind of waiting for something to happen, your nerves are getting rattled, and you just can't even trust really anybody around. It does pretty good with kind of giving you that kind of a feel. And, you know, going back to the filler and whatnot kind of a feeling to it, there are a lot of scenes, not too many actually, but, you know, there are some scenes where not only do they not really work, but they just feel like they're just totally not, like, on par with the rest of the film at all. Uh, there are scenes that are not only, like, very common in other kind of films with this kind of a route, but... They just absolutely kind of throw the movie off, and you can clearly tell, like, the only reason for these films is because they're trying to get this runtime going. They're trying to kind of, you know, fill up this movie before they actually unravel everything, which I thought was a pretty big issue because I don't know exactly how long this film is personally, but when you look back at it, it's like, the movie could have been so much better without that. Like, I know that they're trying to, you know, get a decent runtime out of this kind of a plot, which is very common, but... The movie would have been fine alone without these scenes. It would have not been a big issue, which that was kind of a common thing that kept happening, you know, especially as the film started to get toward its end where, you know, you can see that they're not, I wouldn't say running out of ideas, but they're kind of struggling with building things or keeping it a structured kind of a story. And the biggest issue I have by far is that uh, going back to the characters, it is definitely a character thing where it's like if you pay enough attention to detail, you can tell pretty early on where things are going. Again, this is a pretty, like, like as far as, like, flow goes, it does pretty well with, you know, again, keeping things fresh, keeping you guessing, but it's one of those things where it's like you're not quite sure if that's the actual thing that's going to be revealed, but by the end, it does kind of have one of those reveals where it's like, oh, okay, I can see how that Okay, I see now. I see now. And yeah, you know, some things do get pretty repetitive. It doesn't give a whole, like, amount of variety. Not only in the sense of, like, its thrills, but just in its tone and in its pacing. There are times, especially, you know, again, like, runtime-wise, where this film does start to get... To, where this film does start to feel, like, a little bit dry and honestly a little bit melodramatic at times. Though, now getting to the actual closer of the movie, I will say this. It is an absolutely different feel from the movie in a sense where I would actually say that it really does, it really, like, is divided far out from the rest of the movie. And I would actually argue that is, it is a pretty solid ending that audience would actually, you know, kind of want out of this thing and kind of hope for and honestly be worried that they're not going to quite get. So yeah, overall guys, it's just, it's a pretty solid psychological mystery that does a solid enough job with keeping things fresh and keeps you guessing. 
It doesn't really outdo anything. It just it just comes off as a solid mystery. Overall, guys, I'm going to give this film at least a solid 5 out of 10, maybe a little higher. So yes, guys, that is my review on Watcher. Uh, this is, again, kind of like an underrated film. It is an indie film. It's an IFC Midnight film. It's going to be on Shudder, so... Uh, definitely support this film if you're able to. Um, again, it is getting a limited release. Uh, this is not a huge, wide, big budget release. But as far as like for a psychological thriller, not only on like this level, but just the way it feels. It's not only does it do pretty solid with that, but it's just a, got a nice feel to it. This is easily a film that you can just you know kick back and throw on during again like a rainy day or like a you know cold kind of a season. So. I think that for what it does, it does fine with. It's just, you know, there's not really a whole lot of new stuff to do with this possibly kind of a story, but I think that it does a pretty sol solid job in kind of all departments, more or less. So yes, guys, that's going to do it for my review on Watcher. Let me know what you thought about the film if you have seen it, as well as the video down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care of yourselves, guys. Have a nice day.